Hey guys, it's Yuta. So, many people are increasingly interested in Japan's criminal justice system, but there's a lot of misconceptions around this, especially with Japan's conviction rate, which is more than 99%. But many people bring this up out of context, and as a result, many people completely misunderstand this. To the point where somebody even say that Japan has a very high arrest to conviction rate. But this is completely wrong because that's not what a conviction rate means. It's actually an indictment to conviction rate, which makes a huge difference because in Japan, most cases are not indicted in the first place. So if you are arrested in Japan, you will not be convicted the majority of the time. You have a much higher chance of not being convicted than convicted. This is because Prosecutors won't bring charges unless they are 100% sure that they have enough evidence and they think you should be convicted. Because they don't always think that you should be convicted even if they can. Let me go through the process. So, let's say you are arrested in Japan. First, you will be in police custody for up to 48 hours and then they will hand over your case to prosecutors. However, if your case is minor and if it's your first time, the police just may record your case internally and release you. For example, if you just got into a minor fight when you were drunk, they might just warn you and let you go home. And this happens 30% of the time. But 70% of the time, they will send your case to prosecutors and they will begin a full investigation. And after the investigation, if the prosecutors have enough evidence and if they think that you should be convicted, they will press charges or indict you. And this happens around 40% of the time. And if this happens, you will get the infamous 99% conviction rate. But at this point, most cases are not about whether you are guilty or not. They are more about the details of your punishment. But before indictment, if the prosecutors don't have enough evidence or if they think that you shouldn't be convicted, they may decide not to bring charges, so no conviction. And 60% of the time, they will simply drop your case. So overall, using the data of 2018, around 26.8% of the people who were arrested ended up being convicted. So I wouldn't say Japan's actual arrest to conviction rate is particularly high. And this is very different from what the media makes you believe. For example, this video by The Economist entitled Why Japan's Conviction Rate is 99% totally doesn't explain why. And they completely mislead you and make people think that in Japan if you are arrested, you are almost always convicted. But this is not the case as we have just discussed. And reading the comment section, very very few people realized that the video was very misleading. And this article by the BBC pushes a similar narrative. But the way they do it is very subtle because technically they didn't say anything wrong but they push their narrative by the way they present their information and especially by leaving out critically important pieces of information. And unlike what they make you believe, even with murder cases, prosecutors have been dropping 70% of the cases in recent years. So if you want to understand social issues like this, you can't just let the media mislead you. You have to do your own research. But when it comes to Japan, most information is in Japanese. So if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will send you some Japanese lessons by email. So click the link in the description and subscribe. But anyway, I said that they will only charge you 40% of the time once prosecutors handle your case. But what happens to the rest of the case? Well, the most common scenario is a suspension of indictment which accounts for around 70% of the cases. This means they choose not to convict you even if they probably could. So why would they do this? Some of the common reasons is that your case is minor and you're saying sorry. Or 
you reached some kind of agreement with the victim. So they are kind of giving you a second chance. And some other common reasons for dropping cases is that they don't have enough evidence or they simply think that you are innocent. And this accounts for about 20% of the dropped cases. So you can see how prosecutors drop most cases. And in this kind of system, it's only natural that the conviction rate will be high because they drop the case if they think that there's a chance that it won't be convicted. And this means that Japanese lawyers tend to focus on how not to be indicted in the first place. Because there's a good chance that you won't be. And a high conviction rate isn't unique to Japan either. For example, Canada's conviction rate is about 97%. And if you exclude Quebec, which has the lowest conviction rate. So if it's only the English speaking part of Canada, the conviction rate is almost 99%. Pretty comparable to Japan. But of course, other countries may have different system. For example, many people think that prosecutors shouldn't be so picky about their cases and we should let judges decide. And I think the UK has that kind of system. So their conviction rate is lower, which seems to be around 80%. So that's more or less how the system works. And of course, this doesn't say anything about whether the system is good or not. People have different opinions. So let's talk about some of the most common issues with Japan's criminal justice system. And the most common issue is what we call hitojichi shiho which can be translated as hostage justice. And this mainly concerns the length of detention. In Japan, suspects can be detained for up to 23 days without being charged. The law actually says that you can be detained for this long only when it's really necessary. For example, if there's a good chance of destroying evidence or escaping. But in practice, it's quite easy for them to extend. And there are cases where people are detained for a long time for minor cases, such as getting into a fight where your sentence will be something like a thousand dollar fine. And they say this often happens when you say you're innocent because prosecutors have limited time and if they can't prove that you are guilty, they have to drop the case. And in the worst case scenario, you will be charged and detained even further. So many people argue that this is against the presumption of innocence because you are already in a prison-like situation where you're supposed to be considered innocent. So this is a huge issue. And another common issue is a lack of transparency in regards to interrogation. Because you can be interrogated for hours and days without the presence of attorney. So if prosecutors do some questionable things during interrogations, it's going to be very hard for you to defend yourself. And this is often criticized for producing false confessions. Because imagine that you are detained for weeks, even if you are innocent, and you are interrogated daily, and you just want to go home, and they will tell you, oh, if you confess, you can go home and maybe you will pay a fine later, and everything will be over. But if you don't, you will continue to be detained. And of course, it's understandable that some people end up confessing even if they didn't do anything. And we have many cases of false confessions. And a lot of horror stories that you hear usually involve these two issues. So they are quite well known and well documented. Actually, Japan Federation of Bar Associations, which is the official association of attorneys in Japan, they publicly address these issues on their website, both in Japanese and in English. And they have been asking for changes for many years. So the question is, have there been any changes? Actually, they have. In 2016, they passed a law that requires interrogations to be recorded in some cases. And in 2019, the law went into effect. However, those cases are still limited. And in also 2009, a lay judge system was introduced in some cases. It is said that because of this, the conviction rate got slightly lower. And on top of this, 
there seems to be a trend where judges put less importance on confessions and more importance on objective evidence. So there have been some changes, but the government seems to be quite resistant to them. But as you can see, Japan's criminal justice system is a complex and huge topic, and I could barely scratch the surface. So don't think that I covered everything in this video. It's impossible. If you want to do your research, each and every point of this video has a wealth of information and you could spend days just reading about it. And you already know that the media usually don't bother explaining the context. So you need to do your own research. But if you do, you have to understand Japanese because most information is in Japanese, including many primary resources. So if you want to learn Japanese with me so that you can understand complex issues like this, I can teach you the kind of Japanese that Japanese people actually use, which can be quite different from the kind of Japanese that textbooks teach you. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Utah. All right, see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.